Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Christ Church. We're going to open up the heavens, although they've been open and raining a lot, but we're going to open up the heavens and worship God this morning. Please stand and join us. We sing together. Good morning. It's so good to see you here today and to be in worship with you. I'm David Hall, one of the pastors here. You know, we say that we would like everyone in the church to be involved in at least two ministries, one inside the church and one out in the community. Your bulletin this morning is full of ways for you to do that, ministries and activities and events. We'd like to highlight just a few of those now in this video.
Let me add just one more announcement. We've got confirmation coming up very soon. This is a class where students in the sixth grade and older learn what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be a member of the church. Those classes are going to start in, on January 23rd. We're going to have an orientation. That's a Wednesday evening. The orientation is for the students and for their parents. It'll be at 6 o'clock in room M5. So come and be there and learn all about confirmation with Pastor Nathan and Cody, our youth director. Our scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1. The beginning of the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now we get a chance to stand together and continue in our worship this morning as we thank God for all of the amazing things that he does in our lives and just who he is, guys. This is our chance to worship and call out to him this morning. Let's lift our voices. Every chain, oh. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for who you are, God. We thank you that you are the way if we will just look to you, God. Lord, you are truth in a world where it is hard to know what truth is, God. If we will depend on you, if we will call out to you, you will show us the way, Lord. And God, you give us life and you give us breath. And you give us your presence to guide us every day. And Lord, my prayer for this new year, for this new horizon, God, is that we who are called by your name, we are, who are called to live for you, will we'll have a new boldness, God, and a new strength 
to show others, not just in the way we live our lives, God, but to open our mouths and to share with others who you are in our lives, God, and what difference you can make in their lives. And Lord, I am so guilty of holding that good news to myself too often. Lord, but you have called me, you've called us to be your witnesses to this world. Lord, we love you. We give you praise for this day. We give you praise for breath and life to worship you, God. May we take full advantage of the opportunities that we have to come together in your house and to worship you, God, and to pour out our hearts so that you can fill us up so that we can go out and truly live for you. Lord, we pray this morning as you taught your disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're following up on the season of Christmas by acknowledging that the greatest gift that was ever given to anybody who's ever lived or ever will live is the gift God gave us in Jesus Christ and Jesus gifting himself to the world. And our focus in this series this month is on the benefits that come with that gift. It's the gift that keeps on giving throughout our lives in this world and beyond. My focus today, the benefit I'm focused on today is the good news that comes through Christ, this gift of Jesus. Everybody likes good news. I don't know of anybody that doesn't like to get good news, and it comes to us in various ways, various times throughout our lives. The story of the birth of The life, the ministry, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is the greatest and ultimate gift of all time, the the best news that we've ever received in all time. No matter the news that we get, we get news all the time on TV, don't we? And the internet and other kinds of social media and print media. Don't ever forget that no matter what kind of news you get out there in other ways, we have good news to receive, and to share with others. As the writer of the Gospel of Mark gets into telling the story of Jesus, he doesn't give us any of the birth, any of the early years of Jesus, because he wants to get right to this good news. He wants to get right to the ministry of Jesus. He begins with one word that sums up that good news. That word is gospel, and that word means Good news. It's such a unique story that it gets its own category in the Bible. If you look up different types of literature in the Bible, a listing of different types of literature in the Bible, you'll see poetry, you'll see history, you'll see law, you'll see letters. One of those categories is gospel because this is unique. It's a unique way of telling this unique story. I love the Bible translation known simply as the message. The writer who translated the scriptures into really simple, everyday language was a man by the name of Reverend Eugene Peterson. He was a Presbyterian pastor who died last October at age 85. He was first a a professor, a teacher of the biblical languages of Hebrew and Greek And so the combination of that kind of knowledge, and then he was a pastor for 40 years. So that combination of that knowledge and that experience uniquely gifted him to be such a perfect translator of the scriptures into everyday simple language. 
And here's how Peterson translates the first verse of the Gospel of Mark that we heard read earlier. The good news of Jesus Christ, the message, begins here. As Peterson puts it, the good news of Jesus Christ is the message. And then this pastor translator goes on to name the whole book the message, as if to say this whole book, this whole Bible, is focused on the good news of Jesus Christ. My challenge today is to sum up, is to try to give a summary of that good news. I said earlier that the story of Jesus has its own category called gospel, and in our Bible there are four gospels, four accounts of the good news of Jesus. So to get the full understanding of this good news, you really need to read all four of those gospels. And I would, if you haven't done that in a while, I would invite you to do so. Um, Read the four gospel accounts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And if you've not done, done much Bible reading or you were turned off in some earlier attempt to read the Bible, I would commend to you the message translation. It really is a good introductory tool that will get you into reading the Bible. But for right now, I want to sum up this good news in this way. As I said, there are many pieces to the story and the message that is the gospel, but for today, I want to sum it up this way with these three statements. You are loved. You are forgiven. There is always hope. That's my elevator answer. If somebody asked me to sum up the gospel, to sum up the good news really quick, we're just... Riding the elevator for three floors so we don't have much time. Give me the gospel in a few statements. That would be it. You are loved. You are forgiven. There is always hope. I believe those three messages go to the core, to the very core of who we are and what we seek in life. That that in our experience of life in this world, we all need and want to hear those three messages. And I believe there's a lot of other people out there who also need and want to hear those three messages. So let's look at each of them briefly this morning. First of all, you're loved. The Gospel of John, all the Gospels emphasize it, but the Gospel of John really emphasizes this love of God for every person throughout his writing, summed up, of course, in what I believe is the Uh, most famous of all verses in the Bible in chapter 3, verse 16. Also, though, in that gospel, Jesus tells his disciples that to be a part of who he is and what he's about, they are to, quote, love one another as I have loved you. I have shown you this love. I have taught you this love. Go and share this love. Be this love with other people. And he goes on to show that this kind of love is summed up in one set of hyphenated words, self-sacrificing. God gave self. Christ gave self to show, not just to say it, but to show it. You are loved by the one who gave you life. And then later in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul, that Jewish leader who was converted to believe in Jesus so much so that he was one of the greatest evangelists of all times, starting many churches, writing much of our New Testament. As he wrote several years later to the Christians at Rome, he stated that there's nothing in this world that can separate us from this love of God we find in Jesus. At the end of chapter 8 in the book of Romans, he goes through this list of various aspects of our experience in this world and builds to this climactic statement of good news for everyone. You cannot be separated from God's love. As I like to put it, God loves you and there's absolutely nothing you can do to change that. That's good news. The second part of my summary of the good news is you are forgiven. We all know that we all mess up our lives at times. We're all sinners. 
we hurt ourselves by things we do and things we don't do that we need to do. We hurt other people by things we say and things we don't say that we should have. We all participate in systems and ways of living that hurt other people. We look the other way when we know something needs to be done. We live in a fallen world where we sin and thereby add to the problems, to the fallenness of the world. But we're also sinned against as individuals and systems, by by systems and powers beyond our control. Yes, sin is individual actions and thoughts, but it's also a condition, our condition. And God knows all of that. All down through time, God has seen and experienced all of that in us and with us. And in the midst of all of that, Jesus Christ comes among us and announces this part of the good news. In spite of all that, you are forgiven. For me, the most dramatic scene in all the Bible that drives that point home is when Jesus hung on the cross and prayed, Father, forgive them. He'd not done anything to deserve being there. He had the option at that point of becoming very angry and bitter and lashing out at all of us. I'm reminded of way back at the beginning of the Bible story in the book of Genesis. We're told that at one point God got so put out with the humans, he was ready to destroy everything he had made, particularly the humans. Well, it seems to me this scene on the cross, this moment on the cross, is another great opportunity for God to have gotten so put out with us as to destroy us. Jesus himself could have called on God to destroy all of it. But instead, he prays, Father, forgive them. Before we even ask for it, be assured that no matter what you've done to mess things up, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Be assured that no matter what's happened to you in your life that has messed things up for you and caused you to then continue to mess things up, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Please hear that and receive that as part of the good news. One other quick note here about forgiveness. We included in our Bible reading this morning verses from Mark that talk about Jesus' baptism. On the Christian calendar, today is the day that uh, Jesus' baptism is recognized. And so we included those verses And I want to say just a word about how we look at baptism. In in the United Methodist Church, we understand baptism to be a sacrament. And a sacrament means that it's an act of grace. It's an act of us recognizing the grace of God to us. And because it's an act of grace, it comes to us as gift before we make any decision to receive it. While we believe every person is to be given an opportunity to decide for themselves to follow Jesus and profess their faith in Jesus, we do not necessarily tie that decision to baptism. Why? Because baptism is more about God than it is about us. Baptism is about God marking us as God's own. It is God marking us to say, you are mine. It is an act of grace. Sometimes people ask me why we baptize babies. Well, that's why. Because we believe it's an act of grace. It is an act of God marking us. 
And that at some point, yes, we'll give that child an opportunity to own that for themselves, to make that decision to, to be a Christian, to follow Jesus and profess their faith in Jesus. But in baptism, we're primarily marking that person as God's own. It is an act of grace. It is a time when we're, in a sense, announcing or stating or emphasizing this part of the good news. You are forgiven. Jesus, again, as he hung on the cross, specifically prayed that prayer for those at the foot of the cross who hadn't asked for forgiveness, and yet he said, Father, forgive them. Here's the last part of my summary of that good news. There is always hope. Here's what that means for you and me in our everyday lives. There's absolutely nothing that can happen to you in this life that God cannot overcome and help you overcome. Easter, of course, is the event that God drove that point home fully, completely, and ultimately. God even overcame death. So one way of looking at all this talk about good news in Jesus is to say there's two times when we hear the good news from God, at Christmas and at Easter. Part of the Christmas story, you will recall, says that angels... An angel appeared to shepherds outside of Bethlehem on a hillside and scared the daylights out of all of them. You remember what the angel said at that point? Do not be afraid. I bring you what? Good news of great joy for everybody. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And his work of being our Savior is completed and affirmed when many years later at a gravesite by another angel who shares this news. He's not here. He's risen. Jesus is alive. We hear the good news at Christmas. We hear the good news at Easter, the greatest news that's ever been shared. He's alive. There's always hope. I want to thank the Tivoli Theater Foundation. You're wondering, where in the world did this come from? I want to thank the Tivoli Theater Foundation for providing me an opportunity to score some points with my wife Saturday of last weekend. As part of the new Bobby Stone film series, they showed E.T., on their new state-of-the-art sound and projection system. Bobby was a foundation board member who died tragically last summer, and the board and his family chose this series as a way to honor his memory and his love for the Tivoli. And so they're doing several different things, uh, different movies, different shows as a part of the series. I've shared with many of you before that seeing the movie E.T. at a theater was the first date for me and my wife several years ago. Uh, So last month when I saw that advertised in the paper, I hid announcements about it. Every announcement I saw in any venue, I hid them from her so that I could recreate that date last Saturday. Now let's all say it together. Aww. And I realize that some of you are thinking, not so much all, but I wonder what he did to get in so much trouble that he had to do something like this to recover. E.T. is a good story or parable that has many connections to aspects of our life in Christ. One of those comes in a scene when the doctors have determined that the little extraterrestrial creature is dead. The boy named Elliot was the first to discover and befriend E.T. They had a a very unique uh, and deep bond with each other. And so Elliot is given a few moments to be alone with E.T. Let's watch.
because I don't know how to feel. I can't feel anything anymore. I can go on someplace else now. believe in you all my life every day joy and excitement of sharing with his older brother that E.T.'s alive in a parable reminds me of the good news that we have to share about Jesus being alive. It's not a parable, it's real life. And when those first disciples experienced that, they began to share that good news with everybody they could. And they've given to us, they passed down through the years, the privilege and the honor we have to share that same good news to let people know that it's not just that Jesus rose from the dead a long time ago and was alive then, but that he's still alive. And because of that, there is always, always, always hope. There is nothing that can happen to you in your life. There's nothing that can happen in this world that will snuff out that hope. So, this gift that we received at Christmas of Jesus, one of the major benefits that comes with that gift is good news. And I believe one way to sum up that good news is with these three statements. You are loved. God proves to us in Christ that you are loved. You are forgiven. It's one of the major messages Jesus came to share with all of us. You're forgiven. And there is always hope. I invite you to go and live the rest of your life as if you really believe this good news. And share it with as many people as you can. Amen? And amen. Let's pray. Gracious and generous God, 
You gift us in so many ways. You gift us with life. You gift us with your presence. Most of all, you gifted us with Jesus. And in Jesus, you share your good news that you really are on our side, you really do love us, you really do forgive us, that there's nothing that can happen in life that you can't overcome and help us overcome, and therefore there's always hope. God, we, we ask for your forgiveness in those times when we allow the bad news to drown out the good news, uh, when, when we even participate as messengers of the bad news rather than as your messengers of the good news. Forgive us and guide us and challenge us and keep reminding us and inspiring us to be your messengers of your good news. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. I would remind you about the red folders at the end of the row that helps us stay connected. If you'll share your contact information with us, the person there, pass that down the row, and thank you for participating in that. Uh, We come to that time again of worshiping God with what we've been gifted with, and one of those is our financial resources. And so we give in order to serve God's mission and in order to make a a difference in the lives of others. One of the ways we do that here is the LEAD program. It happens on Wednesday night. Uh, Young people, children, and youth are mentored. Uh, Their parents and other caregivers are guided in various ways. It's a wonderful ministry, and it happens right here. And you make a difference in lives through it. Let us worship God by giving. song we could ever sing, worthy of all the praise we could ever breathe, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, we live for you.
invited into a relationship with Jesus Christ who loves you, who forgives you, and who provides hope for you. You're also invited to become a member of Christ Church, to join with the people here in mission and ministry on behalf of Jesus. Let's stand and sing.